Welcome to the Spare Time Physicist. Today we're going to talk about an old paradox in special relativity that still brings about confusion. It was put forth in the 1950s by British physicist Herbert Dingle, who was opposed to Einstein's theory until his death in 1978. The paradox, put in my words, goes as follows. Imagine that observer A is at rest on Earth and that observer B blasts by in his starship. Relativistic time dilation tells us that the faster you move, the slower your clock will tick. Since B is in motion, this means that his clock will tick slower than that of A. If they were born on the same day and they both live 80 years, this means that observer A will die before observer B. But in special relativity, there is no ultimate motion. There is only relative motion. If we jump to the perspective of observer B, his starship is at rest and it is Earth that moves by at high velocity. So from this perspective it is A that is in motion and B will conclude that A has the slower clock. So if you ask A, he will say that B is the one with the slower clock and that he will live longer. But if you instead ask B, he will say that A is the one with the slower clock and that he will live longer. This seems like a completely absurd statement. And in that sense, it is quite understandable that Dingle and others could not accept special relativity. In this video, we will analyze the situation thoroughly, and in the end, we will conclude that this statement is actually correct. It is possible for time to be relatively slower in both frames. Now, I will not use Dingle's original thought experiment, since it was simply not well constructed. Instead, I've made my own little experiment that will add some extra insight. Now let's decide that observer A and observer B were born on Earth on the same day, and that observer B flew off on his starship right after birth. We will set B's velocity to 86.6% of the speed of light, which will give us a gamma factor of 2. I will refer to this velocity as V. Now to keep track of things, I'll introduce a couple of events that will have to occur in exactly the same way in all possible reference frames. Observer B lives till he's 80 years old, and the cause of his death is an unfortunate collision with an asteroid in deep space. From the perspective of Earth, his time is dilated by a factor of 2. This means that he will travel for 160 years at 86.6% of the speed of light. This gives us a distance to the asteroid of 138.6 light years. Observer A also lives happily till his 80th birthday and is then killed in a very unfortunate event. A Tesla Roadster from deep space penetrates Earth's atmosphere and lands right on his birthday table. For simplicity, let's say that the Roadster flies at the same velocity as the Starship, but in negative x direction. From the perspective of Earth, Observer A lived 80 years, and therefore the Roadster must have been located 69.3 light years from Earth the day he was born. So now we have everything set up in the Earth's frame, let's run the simulation to see what that looks like. From the perspective of Earth, we can make the following statements. Observer A lived 80 years since he was at rest, and Observer B lived 160 years since his time was dilated by a factor of 2. One of the basic assumptions of special relativity is that there is only one reality. If observer A is killed by a Tesla in one frame, then that has to occur identically in all frames. Now the next step is to shift the perspective to the rest frame of the starship. Using the logics of special relativity, we can conclude the following. Observer A will now live 160 years, since his time is now dilated by a factor of 2. Observer B must live 80 years since he is now at rest and the causes of death has to be the same as in the Earth frame. Now again, from an intuitive perspective, this seems impossible. But let's just try to apply the Lorentz transformations and see what happens. If the conditions above are met, well, then it's a win for Einstein, and otherwise it's a victory for Dingle. So, if we shift the position from the Earth frame to the Starship frame at t equals zero, it will look like this. Now the first thing to notice is that there's only half the distance from Earth to the asteroid. 
If we first focus on this part of the simulation, we will see that the asteroid moves towards Earth with minus v. Since it only has to cover half of the distance, it is quite easy to see that observer b will die after 80 years. Shifting to the roadster, this actually starts closer to Earth in this frame, since it has an even higher velocity and its position is therefore more contracted. But at the same time, Earth is moving away from the roadster. And in this frame, the difference in their velocity is much smaller. It will therefore take longer time for the roadster to catch up with Earth. When we run the simulation, we will see that this takes exactly 160 years. So, as predicted, A lives twice as long as B in this frame. We can now check all boxes and conclude that Einstein won the duel. What Dingle forgot in his analysis is that the relativistic transformations doesn't just slow time. They also change the timing of events that are spatially separated. In other words, the reason why observer A can have a longer life than observer B in the starship frame is because the endpoints of their lives are shifted relative to the Earth's frame. Because of this, it is possible for the clocks to be slower from both perspectives. Another good point is that the two observers will die light years apart, and it is therefore not possible for them to interact or communicate at the moment of death. So, it causes no trouble for the order of the events to be swapped. This is mind-boggling, but at the same time, completely consistent with the physical reality that we can observe. I hope you enjoyed this, and if the video was helpful to you, then please share it with others to make more people aware of this channel. Thank you for watching.